Hey guys, welcome back to another Star Citizen video. This video is going to be all about gaining performance inside of Star Citizen. Now, there are a lot of different small tweaks that you can make to the game that may have an impact on your performance, but this video aims to go over the biggest three. So yeah, let's roll the intro and get some better frames. Okay, so rolling right into it, the first thing we want to do is we want to open up our game, and once we have control of our character, we hit Escape, then click Options, and then click into Graphics. Here, we're going to change some settings to gain some performance right away. Right away, resolution is going to be a tricky one, and we'll talk more about that at the end of this video. For now, match it with your screen's native resolution. If you have a 2K monitor or a 4K monitor, set it to 1920 by 1080p and then adjust your sharpening setting down below to 50 or 100. Then moving on, we want to set your quality to high, then your scattered object distance to low, your terrain tessellation to low, and then turn your planetary volumetric clouds off. Don't worry too much about your field of view. Change your motion blur to off, set V-Sync to no, and then finally set chromatic aberration and film grain to zero and no. For some reason it has been discovered that setting your graphics quality to high allows your GPU in a nutshell to function better. Tessellation and scatter distance don't affect performance a whole lot, but we set it to low because this guide is all about gaining the most you can. Next up we are going to open our command console in game and get a reference of our current frames per second so we can see when we adjust settings what works best for us. To do this we want to press the tilde key directly under the escape key on the keyboard. Once we do we will see a console screen show up and normally there isn't a whole lot we can do with windows like this in other games but in Star Citizen we can actually change a few things. What we're going to do is we're going to hit that tilde key and then we're going to type in R underscore display info space three. Once we've pressed enter, in the upper right corner of our screen, you'll see a bunch of info with the top line showing our frames per second. This is what we're looking to improve. Keep a mental note of how many frames a second you're getting on average. It's gonna fluctuate a little bit, but you should be able to say something like, I'm getting anywhere from 20 to 30 frames a second. Depending on where you are, your frames are going to vary significantly. For instance, if you're on Orison, your frames per second is going to be really low pretty much no matter what, but nonetheless, it can still be improved. As we make our next changes, be sure to continue to look at the top right corner of your screen and reference whether or not our changes are having a positive impact on your frames. The next command we're going to enter into the console is going to be Q underscore shader post process space zero. This turns our post processing off. If you want to play around with any of these settings, you can generally change those values at the end of the commands, like the zero for instance, to any value between zero and three. Next up we're going to enter Q underscore shader FX space zero. On mine I have it set to one because I have a bit of a stronger computer rig and it can handle it. Next up we have Q underscore shader water space zero. This basically takes away some of the fancy shader effects for the water. And then another thing that we can take care of is we can type in R underscore SSDO space zero. I'm not sure what exactly this is changing, but it seems to have something to do with ambient occlusion. And then finally, just to be safe, what we're going to do here is we're going to enter in R underscore enable underscore full underscore GPU underscore sync space zero. Setting this value to anything above zero will significantly lag your computer, so make sure it's set to zero. Already, these changes should result in a gain of frames per second. However, there are some changes that we can make outside of Star Citizen that are very similar to this that will result in even more gain. To really get the maximum effect for these kinds of changes, we want to exit out of Star Citizen and on our desktop right click and create a new text document and name it user in all caps. Then we're going to open up that blank document and we're going to add the information you're seeing on your screen now into your blank text. 
If you don't want to type all this out, you can right click and copy this info from our description below and paste it in and save some time that way. You can also change these settings later if some of the settings that we went through earlier weren't the best for you. Once we've filled in this information, we want to go up here and save as, and in the next screen we want to make sure our name is user in all caps, remove the .txt at the end, and then navigate down here and change the save as type to all files. Once we've set that, back in the file name section, add .cfg to the end of the user and hit save. Exit out of the text editor, then right click and copy this newly made config file. Then find your Star Citizen installation and inside the live folder you'll find a folder that looks like this. We want to paste our newly made config document in here. Once that's done, you're free to close the folder and move on to the next step. Alright, this next fix requires us to add a new file to our registry. Now that might sound scary to some, but I promise it's not very hard and this should not harm your computer if it is done correctly. To get started with this, we want to hit the Windows key and type in reg edit, then right click and run as administrator. Once it brings up this screen, we want to click on the side arrow on H key local machine. Then we're going to come down here and click software. We're going to scroll down and we're going to find Microsoft. And then we're going to scroll through this list until we find Windows NT. Once we find it, we're going to click the little arrow, then click current version. And then we're going to click image file execution options. Once we've found that, we're going to right click, select new, and then we're going to select key. We're going to see a folder show up and then we're going to rename this folder starcitizen.exe with a capital S and a capital C. Once we've renamed it, we're going to go to new, then we're going to select key, and then we're going to do the same thing as last time except we are going to rename the new file perf options with a capital P and a capital O. Once we've renamed that, we're going to click new and then we're going to click D word 32 bit value. This is going to create a new value in the right side of the screen, which we are going to rename CPU priority class with a capital C, a capital P, and another capital C. Once we have renamed that file, we're going to double click it, and then under value data, we're going to change the value from zero to three, and then we're going to make sure that our base is set to hexadecimal. Then we're going to click OK, and from here we are free to exit out of the registry editor. Now from here on out, whenever you run Star Citizen, your CPU will run it with a higher priority, which should prevent some crashes and whatnot. All these fixes together should add up to a noticeable gain in performance, but if you're interested in going just a little bit further, there are a few more things that we can do to improve performance just that much more. If we go to our desktop, hit the Windows key and then type in graphics, select graphics settings. Inside this window that opens up, you can disable variable refresh rate if it shows up, but it's not our main focus. Under graphics performance preference, we want to change this to desktop app, then we want to find our Star Citizen executable inside the bin folder of our Star Citizen installation. Once we've added that to the list, we want to click it and then select options and select high performance and then save it. This will hopefully add some power to your GPU when you run the game next. Another thing we can do is we can enable ultimate performance mode on your Windows computer. To do this, we simply hit our Windows key, type in PowerShell, and then run it as an administrator. From here, we enter in this string of code into the text window. You can copy this from our description below. Once you hit enter, you're good to close this window and then hit the Windows key again and type in power settings and open that up. In the box that appears, we want to select additional power settings, and then once inside, we want to select ultimate performance mode, and then we're good to close that out. For all the users out there with a 2K or up monitor, we do have an additional tweak for you. Remember when we talked about changing your in-game resolution to 1920 by 1080 and we'd talk about it later at the beginning of the video? This part is for you guys. We recommend using either DLSS for NVIDIA or Super Resolution for AMD depending on what your graphics card is. 
We noticed quite a boost in performance when we lowered our in-game resolution, enabled borderless mode, and then used our graphics card's respective upscaling techniques like AMD's super resolution. Once you do, it will upscale your lower resolution to your native monitor resolution in a way that results in better frames than just setting it in-game. It has a very, very small, possibly even unnoticeable effect on your overall quality when you're in-game, especially when we brought up our sharpening effect in Star Citizen's graphics. And that's about all we have for you guys in the way of meaningful tweaks you can make to improve performance. So with all that being said and done, you should have quite a boost in your performance, especially if you used our user config and copied that into your game directory. When we enabled these fixes on our computers, we saw frame rates in the high 90s, even in the hundreds. So we hope that this helps you guys out a lot as well. Finally, if you guys enjoy our content, be sure to leave us a like and smash that notification bell as well as that subscribe button so that you guys can be notified whenever we release new content. We are a pretty new channel, so every bit of love that you guys show us makes all of our labor just beyond worth it. We want to thank you guys for making it to the end of the video, and as always, we hope to see you guys all out in the verse soon, and most importantly, don't forget your med pens. Peace.